What's up to all my freelancers and creatives? This is Nathan, and this is another episode of Freelance Jumpstart. But specifically in this episode, we're gonna dive into what I've been doing on YouTube. So at the time of this recording, it's been three years that I've been on YouTube. Now really, I actually crossed the three year mark a couple of months ago in October, but I actually forgot to do a video. So here's the video where I talk about how it's been in year three on YouTube. Now I wanna do a callback to a video that I did um, talking about my goals. I had a video talking about my 2018 goals and then I had another video talking about my mid-year goals. So I'll put both of those in the description below. But more specifically, in that video I talked about YouTube. I talked about a couple of things. I mentioned how many subscribers I wanted to get and I also mentioned how much content I wanted to produce. But these two goals have a subtle flaw in them. See, the thing I noticed when it comes to YouTube is the algorithm has changed multiple times. So when I made that goal, my videos were getting a lot more views because of how the algorithm worked. But somewhere along the lines, the algorithm changed and my channel started getting less views. And both of those goals, I talked about putting out more content and getting more subscribers were related to how many views I was getting. And those are the wrong type of goals to set. The reason those goals were not right is because they were too dependent upon YouTube. And I was almost at the mercy of YouTube. And sure enough, the algorithm changed and I received less views and those goals became more and more irrelevant. But even though those goals became less relevant, some awesome things still happen because I was producing content on YouTube and that's what I'm gonna dive into and talk about. But first I wanna highlight some of the awesome videos and some of the awesome things that I did this year. One of the goals I had was a part called Traffic Talk. Now this would be a Q&A style show where I answer questions while on my daily commute. And I absolutely love this segment of the show because it gives me the opportunity to talk directly to the viewers, those in my newsletter, whomever has questions, and directly answer those questions. And some of the best things I've said all year were in those videos. So I think it is awesome that I was able to talk about doing traffic talk, but make that a reality in 2018. Some awesome videos that I did was the state of create where I brought on Justin Jackson and we talked about the state of creating online courses and what entrepreneurs need to do to be successful today. I brought on another guest, Corey McCabe, and we talked about why your job title matters and actually how to go about choosing a job title that highlights the most value that you have. I also talked about my trip to LA and I talked about the art of storytelling and that video was very popular when I put it on Facebook. So had some awesome content that I put out there. I even had a couple of videos that were my personal favorites, which were you are not a freelancer and overcoming imposter syndrome. Sometimes when we're creating content, we feel fake. We don't feel real. We feel like imposters. And I directly addressed how to overcome that. So that was like an awesome video as well. So with all that content, I realized something that I was doing a lot of teaching a lot of speaking with my audience, talking at my audience, giving examples, and it was a lot of instruction, right? And a lot, but what I really needed to do was more action. I needed to show more doing. Uh, I am a digital marketing strategist and a web designer, but you haven't really seen me do a lot of tutorials or design on this channel. Now I have done that before, right? I talked about how to build a sales funnel. I talked about how to build a product spectrum and I like walked through with screencasts on how to do that. And I even did how to create an agency website and I walked through how to create that in Sketch. So I've done tutorials, but I realized I need to do have more doing because talking about marketing, talking about design, talking about being a creative professional is one thing, but I need to actually show you how to do certain skills, and I believe that would also help the content on my channel. Now, back to something that I said earlier, I talked about I set the wrong goals on YouTube, and that's true. Those goals were not the best because they were focused solely on growth. But the one thing that I've seen on my channel is, though I don't have millions of subscribers, my channel is still allowing me to grow in my professional career. 
Let me explain. Because I make videos on a weekly basis, I am a better speaker. Because of this, I'm more comfortable on camera and more comfortable in front of people when I'm doing public speaking engagements. Because of this, I actually get more public speaking engagement. This past year, I spoke at Austin, Texas. By the way, that video is coming soon. I spoke at uh, another conference in LA. The first time going to LA and seeing how it is there, I spoke at a conference. I also spoke on an online conference called Word Sesh. Uh, it was gone for a while, but it made a return and I was able to speak on that. I was able to create an online course that's a part of Solid Gigs that is a resource for freelancers and creatives on how to get clients. And I created a course that talked about a couple of things that were there. Actually, I created three mini courses that are a part of that platform and thousands of freelancers are going through those classes. So I'm saying all of this just to say, you may come to my channel and look at my subscriber number and you may think, mm, he's not as high as some other people, but it doesn't really matter because my channel is still advancing my career and those who actually look at the videos that i have on youtube their careers are going up the few people that i've sat with and coached this year and taught them through certain things they're doing better so in terms of impact of my channel i'm putting in work those things are being recognized by the right type of people it's not the amount of viewers it's the type of viewers who are watching there was this uh, conference that took place. It was more of a retreat. It was called Epic Unknown. And during that, only certain people got an invite. One of the reasons that I was able to get an invite was because I reached out to the person, but also they saw the work I did on YouTube and love my content. Not only that, but I've been invited to be a guest on many different podcasts that have taken place this year because they saw my content. These are podcasts that I listen to, to really develop as a creative professional, but here they were reaching out to me and inviting me to be on their show because of the content that I've produced. So three years on YouTube, I can definitely say, I don't think in terms of growth, my channel is as large as I would want it to be. I mean, at the time of this recording, YouTube is going to reduce a lot of people's subscriber account and get rid of those fake spam accounts that some people have. So having big numbers is not really the thing. It's really the quality of the content you produce. And if you're faithful to your audience and you reciprocate to your audience, that's a video by the way, reciprocate to your audience is another video I did this year. If you reciprocate to your audience the right way, you can still have more impact than a channel with hundreds of thousands of subscribers, but they don't really get what they want in their career besides people getting entertained or watching. So as I think back, three years on YouTube has been pretty good and I'll continue to make content here on YouTube. That's the plan. Uh, as I mentioned, going forward, what's gonna happen in the next year, year four of my YouTube journey, I can definitely say uh, there'll be more content in terms of level of quality. I'm gonna switch things up a little bit, flex, a little more of my editing muscles that I have, flex a little bit more of my graphic muscles that I have and show some things. It's really going to be more practicality. I've talked a lot about how to run a business, how to be a creative professional, but I wanna show you some skills that if you implement those specific skills, you can build a business. So more design, more marketing, but also more screencasts and examples of how to do those things as I walk you through this journey. Also, I'm gonna be pretty serious about my design business in 2019 or year four of YouTube. And because I'm gonna be pretty serious about it, less theory, more action. And I'm gonna show you a lot of things I'm doing behind the scenes. And if you wanted to look at these things, you'd have your own business and be able to implement these things as well. Thank you for taking the time to check out this episode. I greatly appreciate it. If you like anything I had to say, give this video a like. If you're listening on the podcast, feel free to subscribe to the podcast, you know, so we can talk. And I reach out to everybody who reaches out to me, no matter if you do that through my website or you reach out some other way, social media, I'll get it. I will reciprocate because that's what I do. I talk to my audience. And like I said, there'll be more content coming from YouTube 
and I'm hoping it just continues and expands and scales with what I really want to see, which is more opportunities to connect to creatives, more public speaking engagements, continue the guest collaborations with other people. I'm going to do more collaborations on this channel and year three has been a good year. I think it's been one of the toughest parts of my life, but overall on YouTube, it's probably my most solid content to date that I've produced the most solid dense content I could say that I've produced. Well, until the next episode, I will catch you later. See ya.